Hello everyone, I'm Jay Ian Burbeck from telecoms.com. Vivo Brazil is making waves in the Brazilian B2B market. Their financial performance in the second quarter of 2023 for digital services on B2B was nothing short of remarkable. With revenues reaching 800 million reais, equivalent to approximately $162 million. This figure represents a 24.2% increase in year-on-year -year revenue and also accounts for 6.3% of the company's total quarterly earnings. So, what strategies underpin such success and how can other carriers navigate the B2B domain with similar efficiency? To unravel this, we're privileged to be joined by Ms. Deborah Bortolassi, B2B Executive Director at Vivo, Mr. Diego Aguiar, Director of Operations at Telefonica Tech Brazil, and Ms. Jennifer Jang, Vice President of CMBG Marketing and Solution Sales Department at Huawei. Let's dive in. So first to Ms. Deborah Bortolassi, what are your views on capitalizing on the opportunities presented by digitalization? Hi, Jay, good afternoon. And everybody from Huawei, thank you for this opportunity. In fact, we just started this strategy at Vivo five, six years ago. Uh, we just started to construct an entire ecosystem. That means we go beyond the core infrastructure uh, in our connectivity. That, that is one of our bases in Brazil to provide digital service to the market. I mean, uh, we've just uh, verticalized our knowledge in three different companies, one of them with the cybersecurity, another one with IT and cloud service, and the third one with IoT and big data service that Diego, that's here with me, is uh, managing this company. And beyond that, we already uh, is investing too much in network service, and we've decided to buy a company last year to, to provide this uh, whole system to the market. We have the, one of the biggest uh, sales team in Brazil, with more than 4,000 uh, salespeople uh, just going to the market uh, from the bottom, what we call the SMB market, up to the top with the biggest account in Brazil. So wow. we are succeeding. As you told, our numbers are growing uh, to this desire. So we are, we are happy with it. And again, to Ms. Deborah Bortolassi, how can Huawei support Vivo in achieving its goals, especially in areas like 5G 2B, the millimeter wave trial in Rio de Janeiro, and Huawei cloud and network solutions for LAN and WAN. For sure, Huawei is one of our main partners in Brazil, not only for our internal infrastructure uh, that we are constructing and covering uh, the whole country, but also with the, the whole portfolio that they are providing for us. It means uh, we can provide service through cloud, through Huawei cloud, and, or, and even a network service with Wi-Fi products, as you want products. And I do believe we have still a lot to do. Uh, as you mentioned, today uh, our digital service represents just uh, around 6% of our revenue. So we still have a promotion to, to grow. And Huawei is really an important partner to, to help us in this. I think this would be a good opportunity to bring Ms. Jennifer Jang into the conversation. So Ms. Bortolassi just mentioned that digitalization offers a significant opportunity for carriers. In your perspective, what key values can Huawei bring to carriers in this market? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Vivo on behalf of Huawei. And we have made a lot of joint innovation uh, in 5G 2B, MPN, SD1, and some security cloud services. And of course, we hope to strengthen the cooperation with Vivo in more domains. Now, I'd like to talk about how to help carriers to accelerate the industry digitization from three aspects. Firstly, Huawei is the only vendor that can offer not only the 5G or fiber network, but also the cloud and AI, which is the foundation of digitization. And Huawei and CN carriers a strategy, business, facilities, and advantages. So in different region markets, we also fully understand the digitization transformation requirement of customers. So based on the different business model, 
we can provide more cross-domain technology and innovation. Uh, for example, in the Philippines, Huawei supports the one-click multi-branch agile provisioning based on the capability of end-lay IP RAN networks, and which can shorten the time to market to enterprises. And secondly, we see Carrios as a partner, not a resale channel. Uh, we would like to support carriers to build their capabilities, for example, for some managed service to enterprise, and also we support the carrier to build their own brand. We can provide the supporting planning tools, uh, digital marketing space, and some enablement training as well. Last but not least, Huawei has a strong local team in more than 100 countries which can provide the professional service and the quick response to carriers. Okay, I think this would be a great opportunity to bring Diego Aguiar into the conversation. So since 2021, IoT Co has been crafting services and solutions in IoT and big data, specifically for the B2B sector. With 5G now ushering in fresh opportunities, how do you plan to harness mobile private networks in Brazil? Hello, Jay, thanks a lot. So the way we approach not just private network, but the entire IoT and big data market is creating an entire ecosystem where we can orchestrate the service to, to our clients. Specifically on private, on private network, we start doing the connectivity. So we bring the, the private network for our clients. After that, we start doing services like hardware, software, managed services, AI, and many other different solutions on top of the, on those private networks. With that, and of course, bringing a lot of data from the, our clients operator, we have been for the last more or less one year helping them to understand that data and to transform that data into digit, uh, into strategic insights for the clients to use on the daily basis, especially to provide a better efficiency for their operations. So again to Diego Aguiar, how has your partnership with Huawei been, especially in the realm of 5G for businesses? For instance, I heard IoT Co and Huawei recently won an Antonel Award for your 5G-enabled smart warehouse. Yeah, yeah, you know, the partnership has been great. Uh, we've been doing a lot, in fact, not just to build the market, and, but especially on to explain to the client the advantage they have when you're using 5G. So um, one of the, this case in specific was quite interesting because um, we could try to get something real and to show to the clients how they can use 5G on a daily basis. Not just because of the technology, because five is more than four, but especially because this new network brings a lot of different features to be explored by those clients. So uh, with that in mind, I can tell you that we have a bright future ahead working uh, on this working between Telefonica and uh, Huawei. Now to Deborah Bortolassi, apart from 5G for businesses, enterprise leased lines are emerging as significant markets. How does Huawei's expertise support Vivo in capturing more of this market? For instance, how can the Cloud Campus solution offer a unique service layer to Vivo's customers? As I told before, uh, we, we've just started to, to push the market through a whole solution. It means that Vivo nowadays is not just a telco company anymore, but uh, we've just moved it to a digital and tech company to the market. What means that our value proposition uh, reads the customer needs and to provide the whole service not only we need to guarantee that we have the technical capacity in our internal teams, but also the right tools to manage the customers, to manage the solutions, to guarantee that the, the, all the SLAs and the quality of service they are buying from, from or to, to attend their needs. So, of course, Huawei, with this kind of tools and platforms, and even with the equipment that we are used to, to lead and throw to the market, we can provide this kind of solutions to the customers and help them to, to guarantee uh, the, the whole service. And finally, to Jennifer Jang, in your opinion, 
what are the B2B opportunities for enhancing campus networks? Undoubtedly, uh, campus network is a promising market. We see great changes in this kind of market. The massive IoT terminals and connections are booming with over 20% of increase every year. It's predicted that in every 100 meter square campus network, it need to connect more than 500 terminals, including the cameras, uh, PDAs, HUVs, and PLCs, and some video uh, meeting screens. So mm, not like the traditional data transmission only, now more and more audio and video oriented service and also in the enterprise they require the more interactive collaboration and this brings the diversified requirement on networks such as high bandwidth for video high availability for plc and some precise positioning and low latency for hv so it's involved upgrade for enterprise office, production network, and IoT network. We see that the 5G, fiber, Wi-Fi, and IoT, multiple technologies coexist in campus network. And also it gives carriers more opportunities to enter in this market. The innovation in the convergency is the approach to strive for more market share. For example, in Hong Kong, uh, for the horse hair industry, we help Hong Kong Tea to build the medical campus solutions with the 5G and Wi-Fi and IoT converged solution. And with the implement unified planning and easy maintenance. As Hong Kong Tea believed that, uh, compared with the single technology integrator, the 5G and Wi-Fi and IoT converged campus solution is carrier's unique advantage, and as well as Huawei. Today, we've delved into how carriers can further expand in the B2B market, particularly by taking inspiration from the innovations and strategies of Vivo Brazil. This sector holds immense promise, and I believe our guests here today have illuminated the path ahead. I'd like to extend my thanks to our panel for their invaluable insights. I'm J.E. Burbeck from telecoms.com. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye for now.